Okay, in this video we're going to look at a couple of exam style questions on solving uh, trig equations with the new ratios. Right, first one says solve sec equals root 2 um, between 0 and 2 pi. Now, just be careful, first thing, you clearly can't take sec inverse, because there isn't a button on a calculator for sec inverse, okay? So, when, once you've got like a single trig value equal to a number and you're trying to take the inverse, the first step we do is we need to turn it back into sine cos or tan. Okay, so sec is the same as 1 over cos, so that would be the same as saying 1 over cos x equals root 2, which would be the same as, if we can rearrange, or you could think about that as root 2 over 1, you can take the reciprocal of both sides, so you can multiply up and, and rearrange, you end up with cos x equals... 1 over root 2. To be perfectly honest, with a lot of practice on this topic, you will skip from that line to that line. If you know sec equals a value, cos would just be the reciprocal of that value, so you can, there's no harm in jumping from that step to that step. Once you've got cos equal to a value, then that's when we take cos inverse, and it's basically the same as what we were doing last year. Okay, so x would equal cos inverse of 1 over root 2, and we are clearly in radians, and then if we do that on our calculator, we would get a quarter of pi. Okay, we're trying to solve between 0 and 2 pi, so then we look at our rules, we're working with co cosine, so it's 2 pi minus answer. So if I do 2 pi minus a quarter of pi, that would give me 7 pi over 4. Look at them both, are they both between 0 and 2 pi? Yeah, can we get any more? Like if you add 2 pi on, no, it would be too big. So there you go. That's our answer. Okay. Okay, next example, there's a little bit more going on. So we've got to be careful. We've got cos x squared, the angle's 2 theta, and we're still in radians. <coughs> okay, the first thing you want to do if you get a question like this, there's a couple of things that are probably going on in your head. Like the angles are two theta. We're actually going to look at double angle identities um, later, but we haven't done them yet. So you're not going to be thinking about those. You you might now this. I've seen people do this, right? You might think, oh, it's a squared term. So when it's a squared term, you think, well, I can use the identities. I I could write cos x squared as one plus cot squared. But there's literally there's literally no point in you doing that. Like the only reason why we use these ones is if we've got multiple trig, like a cosec and a cot squared. This is just something squared equals to four thirds. Okay? So when you look at this mathematically, you should really just realise that is I'm trying to solve something squared equals four thirds. And then I'll worry about what that x is later. Okay? How do you solve something squared equals something? You square root. Okay, so we just square root both sides for this question. You will also need to be very careful of the angle. Okay, so you probably want to adjust this interval. 2 theta would be between 0 and 4 pi. Okay, so we've got cosec squared. So if we square root, that would tell me cosec 2 theta would equal... Please do not forget the plus and the minus. You will throw away a lot of marks if you forget this, because they are going to be multiple solutions that we get. Okay? If we square root this fraction, square root the top, square root the bottom, you will get 2 over root 3. Okay? You could plug it in your calculator, it'll probably look a little bit different, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. All right. So what happens when we've got cosec? We can't take cosec inverse. So instead we look and say, well, cosec is 1 over sine. So if I've got, again, I would normally skip this step, but while we're doing it together, I'll show you. So I've got 1 over, instead of cosec 2 theta, it would be sine of 2 theta. We'll worry about that angle at the very end, okay? So 1 over sine 2 theta would equal 2 over root 3, or 1 over sine 2 theta would equal minus 2 over root 3. And then that would tell us sine 2 theta would equal root 3 over 2. Remember what I was saying, you could skip that step and just flip. If you've got cosec, you know sine would be the reciprocal. Or sine 2 theta would equal minus 
good to be able to. Okay, so now we're at a point where this was like what we were doing last year. You take sine inverse and we get 2 theta would equal, if we do sine inverse of root 3 over 2, remember we're in radians, we're going to get pi over 3. Then we look at our rules and we need to get our next answer, so pi minus answer would be 2 pi over 3. Another common mistake that a lot of people make now is they divide by 2 at this point. The, the very last thing you're going to do is divide by 2. Do not divide by 2 yet. Okay? So we follow these rules. Pi minus answer. Can we add or subtract 2 pi? Well, 2 theta could go up to 4 pi, couldn't it? So we can actually add on. Two pi to both of these. And that would give me seven pi over three and plus two pi which is six thirds so that'd be eight pi over three okay once you've done that you've got all the answers between zero and four pi for two theta the very final step is to divide by two so theta would equal pi over six pi over three just by dividing that by two seven pi over six and 4 pi over 3. Unfortunately, a lot of people would only get those answers and they would have forgotten the plus and the minus. So we also need to solve this to get to see what answers we get from this one. Okay, so we've got to solve sine of 2 theta equal to minus root 3 over 2. So we take sine inverse on our calculator. The first answer we get out would be minus 1 third of pi. And again, loads of little mistakes could be made here, but just don't panic, just follow these rules. Do this first, then do this. Divide by two at the very end. Okay, so always do this. Pi minus answer. If I do pi minus the answer, it's minus minus, so it'd be four pi over three. Then I'll look at my two answers and say, well, can I add two pi on or take two pi off? Clearly we can add two pi onto this one. Okay, so that'll give me five pi over three. But we can keep going, because we can go all the way up to 4 pi. If we add 2 pi onto this one, that would give me 10 pi over 3. And the one that most people forget is because that one was negative. If we add 2 pi on, we can also add 2 pi on again. And I think that should be okay. So if we add 2 pi onto this one, that would give me 11 pi over 3. And 11 divided by 3 is fine we're still not quite up to four pi are we okay don't scribble this out just put like a neat line through it like we just don't want that one to count and then divide by two to get our answers so that'll be two pi over three five pi over six um five pi over three and eleven pi over six so we'd actually get eight answers all together for this question. Okay, got one more exam style question to go, guys. Okay, so final example. Um, full exam style question. This potentially we have quite a few marks. Okay, so it's split up into three parts. Um, first part says solve cot equal to two. Going to give our answer to two decimal places. Then we get a show question. So we're going to rearrange this equation. We want to show that this equation can be written in this form. Think about how exam questions work. Whenever you're asked to show something like this thing here, we're going to rearrange to get to this. The reason why is because if you know that is the same as that, in the last part of the question, when it says solve this equation here, we don't want to solve that equation. We know that equation is the same as this equation. So part C, whenever you show something, you then use that in the next part to solve. Okay, so let's have a look. We're going to solve cos equals 2. Well, cos is 1 over tan, so the reciprocal would be a half. Okay, solving in radians, two decimal places. So if I do tan inverse, I'll use the calculator, so I, don't, I haven't prepared this one. So shift tan 0.5, that's going to give me 0 0.46364. Three, 
Um, I will round it at the end, but I'll never round it too early just because you might get a round in a um, We're working in radians, we've taken tan inverse, so then we just do answer plus pi. Oops. Answer plus pi. And then we get three points. Six, zero, five, two. Um, between 0 and 2 pi, so obviously if we add 2 pi onto these, they'd be too big. So then x would equal to two decimal places, 0 0.46 and 3.605, so 3.61 for two decimal places. Okay. Uh, the next part is potentially these show questions are quite some of the more difficult parts of the exam. Like the reason why they give you that answer is because if you can't get to that answer, you can then carry on with the rest of the question, can't you? But let's see what we've got to do for this one. So I'm looking at cos x squared equals three cos x plus four all divided by two. And the first thing I notice is they've got I've got one squared term and one not squared term, and I need to replace cos x squared because if I can replace cos x squared, I can write it all in terms of cot and cot squared. I would strongly recommend that you write the whenever you use an identity in exam, write it down. Okay, so I know that one plus cos squared theta is equal to cos x squared. So in this case, we're going to be replacing cos x squared, which should be the same as one plus cos squared. So instead of cos x squared, I'd write that as one plus cos squared x equals three cos x. Plus four divided by two. And now we let's just multiply by two on both sides to get rid of the fraction. So two plus two cos squared would equal three cos x plus four. Check what we're aiming for. We want a positive quadratic. So two cos squared minus three cos x. Subtract so four, so that'd be minus two. Okay. Part C says solve this equation, but obviously we know that that equation there is equivalent to that equation there. So by asking me to solve this, I'm really going to solve this. I'm going to solve it between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So we've got a quadratic in terms of cos. Use quadratic formula, use a graphical calculator. Um, whatever you want to do, do not mess this step up, because if you mess this step up, you lose all of your answer marks. Um, hopefully I'll be able to factorise this. I I've said that, but I would check, definitely, if I was in the exam. Okay, so 2, cos and cos. We've got a 2, so it's a 2 and a 1. If I put the 2 there, I get 4 and the 1 there. That's got a difference of, of 3, hasn't it? So I want minus 3, so minus 2 would give me minus 4 plus 1. I mean, if you are going to factorise, which is fine, just expand it back out and check that it gets back to what you started with. You'd get minus 4 cos plus 1 cos would be minus 3 cos. Okay, so we've got... 2 cos x plus 1 equals 0. So cos x would equal minus a half. And we've got cos x would equal 2. Okay, you may notice I left this on because we've already solved that bit. So we could, if we spotted that, just say, well, x equals 0 0.46, 3.61. For this part, we've just got to solve cos equals minus a half. So take the reciprocal, tan. Reciprocal of this would be minus two. Okay, so if I do tan inverse of minus two, that would tell me x equals minus 1.1071. Um, I, I was looking over there, but I've rubbed the rules off. So then you, uh, if you've taken tan inverse, plus pi, so answer plus pi, and we get 2.034. Now they both will add, we want answers between 0 and 2 pi, so then just add on 2 pi to that one. Because tan repeats every pi, you can think about it as adding 2 pi onto that one, or you can add pi, add pi again. Okay, so if I just add pi, that would give me 5.176. So my actual answers to two decimal places would be 2.03, 5.18, 5 
0 0.46, 3.61. Okay, so the, those examples cover like the different styles of um, exam style questions um, on these new trick ratios. Um, you are ready to have a go. There's only, you'd be pleased to know, there's only one exercise this week. Okay, so um, some of the identities are fairly challenging, but I will be doing work solutions later in the week. Um, so obviously keep an eye on those. Um, and as usual, the questions in green are more challenging. And it's up to you if you want to attempt those ones. I would, I would try some of them, um, and then just ask us if you get stuck. You know, we're more than happy to help. All right, guys. Thank you.